Well, look, I'll do just a, a, a quick comment here, just so everybody knows, attendees and uh, Smart Build Crew. Um, I'm at a trade show right now, so is Royden. So we won't participate in the body of today's uh, webinar. I just want to let people know we're going to introduce something new today called the Viewer. Um, and the Viewer is a pretty neat capability. I'll let Sean show it to you guys. This does involve, um, from a technical standpoint, it involves a, an additional license, just as our e-modeler does. We call that anonymous processing. So uh, in any case, what we're doing is we're putting together a licensing scheme where we're going to couple the viewer, unlimited use of the viewer with unlimited use of the e-modeler. So um, we'll have that structured next week. So anybody who's interested in pursuing that, just, just call either reach out to me or Royden next week, and we'll discuss that. But for today, uh, Sean will show you how it's going to work, and we'll be tweaking it and enhancing it like we do all of our systems. So uh, anyway, thanks for joining today, and uh, hopefully we'll talk to some of you next week. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Keith. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen here. All right. Mark, can you confirm the, uh, my screen? Yes, sir. All right. Okay, so Smart Build 1.78, and just to piggyback off of what he said, we'll jump into the viewer first. And like he said, this is something that has to be turned on, and something that you know, if you discuss it with Keith, um, then we can turn it on. You're not going to see this right now, I don't think, but you can get access to this. So I have it turned on. And in order to get to this, I went into the jobs list, and then you need to get into the details. And to get into the details, you can click on a name of any job in the system. Um, I'll just click on this one here that I have set up. And one way to access this is here on the details page where you get some job information, the price, and then down here, there's this read-only link. And if you click on this, it'll just copy this link. And this is a secured link. It's why it's kind of a funky looking email address, but it has security in there. So, you know, people can't just figure out what that is and find that job. And so now if I paste this URL into my web browser, it is going to bring up the model that I had created there on my system. And you can rotate and zoom around. You know, you can do kind of the same kind of things you can do in the edit view. You can toggle the shell, you can toggle the landscape um, and change the view. And right now, that's it. That's all you can do. This is just meant to be kind of a view. And so you can send this to anyone. You can send this to a client. Um, in an email, and then they can click on it, and then they can get access, and they can kind of take a look at the model. The other way that you can send this, it is this web address is available as a token in your documents. So if we go to the outputs, and if I go here to add, and if we go down to the somewhere in here document template. Um, so in order to get all the different tokens that are available for a document template, you can come in here uh, to the outputs, hit add, go to the document template. And if you click here, this will actually download an entire list of all the tokens. And this is going to be the token that will get you the link to this, this viewer here. So this, what I just downloaded here, it gives you all the tokens that you can put into your documents. And then for any given job, it's gonna fill in this information for that specific job. So in this case, you know, if you have a sales proposal and you have this viewer, link in the body of it, it's going to put this web address into your document and someone can just click on that and go directly to this viewer. 
So if you want to get that into your documents, this is going to be what you want to copy and paste into your uh, templates. So that's uh, the viewer. And again, uh, give Keith or Roy a call next week when they get back from the trade show and he can discuss details. Okay, so I'm going to go into this job here and we'll look at some of the other new stuff. So the first thing that we'll look at here is the scissor truss capabilities. So in the past, if I go into the roof framing here, we have, we've had this truss special for a while. You could have scissor trusses in your database, but nothing in the 3D model would indicate those are scissor trusses. It was just kind of a property of that truss. Uh, we did parallel cord trusses, I guess it was a couple sessions ago, but now in order to get the scissor trusses, you just go to truss special, you can click on scissor truss just like before, but now you will end up with actual scissor trusses. And, you know, the top cord pitch is going to be based on your roof slope, which is coming from this main building tab, just like, you know, any other truss that we have now. And then in the same roof framing section, there is a new uh, bottom cord pitch. And so that'll give you the bottom cord. Um, and this is going, you know, these are going to act like any other trusses in the system. So there in the catalog, there is a truss special for scissor. There is going to be a, we can maybe go look at this. There's um, roof slope two. I think there's roof slope one and two. And so you'll input the bottom cord pitch and you can put these into your truss catalog. They'll be recognized just like any other trusses and they'll have a cost and a price. Um, the other aspect of this is on the gables, there's some flexibility here. We've had this use standard trusses for gables for a while now, and that will just, if you check that on, you're going to not get the gable truss really it's just going to use the same common truss for your gables. So when I turn that on, now we have, we don't have any gables actually in this building. Technically, you know, the software doesn't see any gables except we've added in these front gable flat and back gable flat check boxes in conjunction really with the scissor trusses. And what those will do for you is if you need to, for example, in this case, we could make the back gable not be a scissor, basically. So now we have scissor on the front. We have commons all the way along here and then on the back. This is still a common truss just because I turned this on. Um, but, you know, as you can see, it's a flat gable on the back side. And so you could do front as well. You can do a kind of a combination of these. Um, you cannot do like a standard and a gable on the front and back at this point. If anybody needs that, let us know. But as you can see here, I turn on gables the front and the back and then the scissor for the rest of these. Um, and you can use steel with these as well. And I'm gonna go into the trusses here. You can see that it just doesn't recognize this at all. And just for demonstration, I'm going to put in just something here. And I'm going to add this one to the trust table, but you can see. Um, okay, so I guess there is a separate bottom slope is actually this 212. So that's a separate um, input field there that will define these. But I'm going to add this to the trust table just straight from the job here. And I do have to hit refresh for that at the moment. So now I have the scissor. Um, 
Yeah, and I guess we don't have any webs on these at the moment. But so you you know you can populate your database with these scissor trusses and get cost and price in here as well. And you can do that through the upload and download process, or you can do it here in the job. Um, these also will apply to attached buildings. So you can do the same kind of things uh, with these attached buildings. And this is it's going to keep some of my settings that I did for my main building here. You can see we have the, the front and back. Um, and in this case, the truss special is going to be down here. So these are scissor. So you can do the same kind of things and you can add in an attached building with scissor trusses as well. Okay. Uh, Sean, we had a couple of questions pop up. One from mm -hmm. Durham. Do a combination of scissor trusses and flat trusses as common trusses? And the answer is kind of sort of. What you have to do is specify uh, your, in this case, you would, you would specify your main building as a 30 foot main building with scissor trusses and then do an attached building the same dimensions with common trusses. Mm -hmm. The other question was, will it adjust the ceiling liner quantity and the gable wall liner length? And the answer is no, not yet. Right now, if you have a ceiling on your building, that ceiling is always going to be flat. <clears throat> we are going to work on that. The other thing that we need to work on is it's when you open the wall, if you have a scissor truss, we need to open the wall all the way to the bottom of the scissor truss. So both of those are coming soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are great questions. Yeah, so if you wanted to have a combination of scissor trusses and flat trusses, you would have to do this. You probably have to open the main wall too. Open the main wall. Uh, open, yeah, on the attached building, open the main wall. This guy here? Yeah. Oh, that's gonna. That's more how they would, how they would build it. Uh, no, edit the settings for the attached building. Uh, That's fully open. Yep. Um, yes, Mitch says, please work on adjusting the liner length ASAP. Otherwise, it's just big and for takeoff error. Um, yes. Yep. So we need to get the liner to go to the bottom of, of the uh, scissor truss. We also need to do the same thing for the parallel cord trusses. Um, and then also work on, if you have a, a scissor gable, if you didn't have the flat gable and you opened up that end wall, right now it just opens the end wall up to the top of the wall. It needs to up, open it all the way up. So certainly if there are other things than those two <laughs> that need to happen with regard to scissor trusses that we're just not thinking about, uh, please you know, reach out to support and let us know that this is something that needs to happen. And we'll get it done. Yes. Yep. Okay. So we'll move on here. When we get to the end, we'll open it up for questions. So if, if you do have other questions, we can get into anything you want really coming up. A couple more things here. We had some requests when we put in these new openings and the opening styles and the way that these get input. And that was, I guess, maybe three sessions ago, we had requests to kind of put it back the way it was for some people. So we had kind of a mixed reaction here. So we did some work on these and basically we did put it back to something very similar to what it used to do. 
And so I have kind of a mix here where I have styles set for some of these. And for these walk doors, I actually, I have no style set. Maybe real quick, I'll go into the windows where I know I have a bunch of these styles. So you can set styles for your windows and doors in your inventory. And it's really another category, a group that you can put your openings in to help organize them. So if you know you have sliders, you can have a group of sliders. When I click on those, I'm just gonna get my slider windows. If you have double hung, you can just put them um, all into the double hung and so on. And in some ways we did this for eModeler where people who are coming in on the internet can see kind of these different styles. You can give them some different categories. If you like using these, you know, this is what you're gonna get when you first, um, I'll just open this up again for the windows. When you first open it up, you're gonna get your styles and then you can pick your style and then you can pick an opening from the styles or from your list according to the style. If you do not wanna use those styles, I do not have any styles for my walk doors. What happens now when I click on walk door, it's just going to give me the first walk door on my list automatically. So if this is the one I use the most, um, and actually when I first open that up, you can just start placing these doors. So I can just start walking um, and placing these. If you want to pick a different one, you just click on it. You can come down, grab a different one. And coming up here in the next release, we're going to give you the ability to order this list. So in that case, you should, you know, if you have a pretty typical door that you use a lot, you can put that one at the top of the list. If, when you click on walk door, that's just going to be the one that's selected if you're not using these styles. If you are using the styles, you'll have the same kind of capabilities. You'll just have another layer here where you can pick the casement and then you'll have an ordered list for your casement windows. So that's just a change that we made. We kind of for those of you who wanted that, who don't want to use the styles, it's close to what it used to be. And then we'll give you the ability to order that list coming up here soon. Uh, okay, so one other just kind of little thing that people had requested. We have this toggle landscape. You can turn it off and on. Some people like this, some people like this, some people like to go back and forth. Um, but we had a couple requests to have the program remember which one of these you use. I think right now it just it'll default, or at least previously it would default to this view here. Now it's going to remember if we shut this down and if I open my browser back up, it's going to give us this landscape. And I think it is browser based, so if you use a different browser, it's probably not going to remember it, but um. So you can get the default to come in the way you want. This will also affect, like when you save a starting model, it's going to remember whether this is toggled with the landscape or without it. If you want your starting models to be like this, then just make sure you save the job when you have this view. Um, this also affects this print button up here. When you hit the print, it'll give you whatever you have on the screen here. So if I hit the print, um, we're going to get this white background. If we toggle the landscape and hit print, we're going to get the landscape background. And this will also affect some of the other outputs like the ISO images. So if you output an elevation with those ISO images, depending on what you have here it's going to affect how those outputs come out and in that case you do have to save with this print button you don't have to save i did notice you have if you're going to do one of these outputs and if you switch your toggle if you you know switch from the white to this and you want your outputs you know we i because i saved we could go into the outputs but you do have to save again just to make sure it refreshes that um 
Yeah, so a couple of things there just related to toggling this back and forth. Um, yeah, I think that just a couple other things here. And we'll open it up for some questions. If you use the setup wizard, which I know a lot of people do in order to just change things and uh, upload things, especially new customers end up working in here a lot. There is a new search field that works really well and it'll filter things down. You know, if I put in eight, we're just gonna get things with eight. So it'll filter the list for you. Um, you know, this comes in handy in a lot of different ways and trims especially. So if you're looking for specific things and, you know, before you kind of had to scroll through that entire list and the search was kind of difficult to use, now you can do the search and it'll limit this for you and it's pretty handy. So give that a try. Uh, another related, more of a kind of administrative thing, we added the sync vendor SKUs button and this is really if you kind of have a supplier builder relationship where um you know there's someone who has a database of their materials and if you're a builder using that database you, you get their materials and you get some of the pricing and the SKUs and all that kind of thing um and we have this vendor SKU and I'll, I'll go into this just a little bit in case you don't know about this but Smart Build requires a SKU, you know, as a part number for each one of these different types of materials. And Smart Build is picky about this SKU. We need to have like the length field. And for things like trim and the panels, we have the color field. And so there's a pretty specific way that you can do this. There's some limits to um, the characters you can use. You can't have duplicates of these. So there's various reasons that we added in this vendor SKU, which is basically, if you have a system, you can put in your own vendor SKUs here. And for example, you know, one of the reasons people do this is sometimes people don't want the color codes in each one of these pieces of trim, in this case, the overhead door trim that I have. And they just wanna use like the front part of this and they wanna leave out the color. Well, SmartBelt needs the color in there, in the smart build SKU, but in your vendor SKU, you could leave out the color and all of these could be the exact same SKU for these different colors. Um, and so really the vendor SKU is kind of up to you. It's kind of the wild, wild west. It's what you want to call it and you don't have the limitations here. And there's a, there's a couple of different ways, but anyway, so we have this vendor SKU that you can use. And with this builder supplier relationship, the builders will get these vendor SKUs and these can change. So if a supplier changes some of these vendor SKUs for various reasons, um, it used to not trickle down to the builders and it would end up that, you know, you could end up with having to change a lot of different builders. If you have multiple builders underneath you, you'd have to go into each one and you'd have to kind of coordinate all that stuff and it was a pain. So we added just the button to where you can make changes as a supplier to your vendor SKUs and then you can hit the sync vendor SKUs button and it will go and update all the builders with those vendor SKUs and just keep all that stuff in sync. And you'll get this little warning confirmation. If he hits yes, then it is actually going to go and update all of your builders with the latest vendor SKUs. So if, if that's something you need to do or something you haven't been doing, because is just a difficult project. Uh, we can do that now really easily with the click of this button. And we'll continue to do things like this to help to sync these databases. We're doing some work in the background right now to improve the database and make this more flexible and keep things in sync. So that'll be coming up in the future. And I guess just kind of FYI, we have our SKU, Smart Build, there's a vendor SKU there is also and you do have to go to the setup wizard for this in case you don't know or if this is confusing there is also a supplier SKU. so if i go into say just i'll go into a piece of trim here 
here's the information about this trim. I don't have anything in here, but there is a supplier ID and a supplier SKU. So this is a, a third kind of SKU here. And with a supplier ID, you can give an ID to any individual material in your database and assign it with this ID to a specific supplier. And if a supplier has their own SKU that's different than your vendor SKU or the smart build SKU, you could put in their SKU as well if you coordinate with them. And the main thing that this allows you to do is you can set up outputs to get a list of just the materials for a given job that belong to this supplier. And you could even list out their SKU so that you can set up a material list for that supplier and just send it to them. And it's really easy to get that per job. You can set up multiple different suppliers with their own outputs and just kind of output those per job and send them off. Um, and those right now are available in the, you know, these job data PDFs um, in the job data CSV files, these material kind of outputs. And we do have a task coming up probably next time. We talked about this new job bid report. So we're gonna add the ability to assign a supplier ID to the job bid. So the job bid is just, it's kind of a nicer looking output. It's not a straight up Excel kind of CSV file. It's a PDF and it, you know, it looks kind of nice as your logo. If you haven't seen those, there, there's quite a bit of uh, customization that you can do so you can now put these and you can have different uh, categories but now we're going to do the supplier ID in here as well so you can kind of get some nice outputs uh, to send to your suppliers and you could you know make a specific one to this supplier and you can save that and put in their supplier ID and hit save do some customization on what actually shows up and then you're gonna have that in your system so for any given job you could output that so that'll come up uh, next time, uh, it just kind of went into a little bit about some of the different SKUs. Okay, I guess the last thing here, and this again is a supplier builder relationship kind of thing. But with the trusses in the trust database, so I just went into my settings and clicked on the trusses. So this is my trust database. As probably most of you know, you can upload and download your trust database to add um, or to change the pricing of your trusses. And before, builders could not do anything to their pricing. It was just completely controlled by the supplier. And that's still kind of the case. A, you know, a builder cannot change the price that they get from their supplier of trusses, but they can now upload and download to change that, you know, the final price that they're going to charge to their client. So, you know, we had people requesting this. This is now available. If you're a builder using a supplier and you've wanted to change up your trust pricing with the upload and download, you can do that now with this uh, latest release. Um, we had several bug fixes in there, just kind of some cleanup things. Probably won't go into all those, but if you have any questions about anything, or if you had some bugs that you have seen and wondering if they're fixed, you, know, you can contact support and we can let you know uh, what's been fixed, or you can just kind of check things out. and Hopefully the bugs have been cleaned up um, yeah, I think that's going to be it for the 1.78 release. Uh, next time, we're going to put in some colors and textures for like framing members. So you could have your LVL could be a, a different color than like your uh, two by members. So we're going to give you some flexibility in that 3D model to have some different colors and textures to improve the way it looks and then also unmuted QC kind of purposes as well. Um, and you, you know, if you use like steel, if you're doing red iron steel or black steel or something, you can use these colors to make this look more realistic for what you're doing as well. So that'll be coming up. Um, 
We're going to do the ability to rotate the sheds. That's something we've had on our list for a while. So right now, you know, you can't rotate a shed. You can rotate an gable kind of building to where you can get kind of an I-shaped building or something like that, but you can't rotate the sheds. And so we've had several different buildings and requests for people that want to be able to rotate those sheds. So that's going to be coming up. Um, I mentioned ordering that opening list. Um, we're going to allow you to update your starting models if you make changes to your payment schedule. And then I did mention that supplier ID on that bid report. And there'll be more things coming in, but that's just kind of a preview of what we have coming up. Okay, so I think that's everything that I wanted to get into. And at this point, this is when we just kind of open it up for your questions or if there's any questions that you guys submitted or Mark or Paul, if you guys had anything come in, I think we'll just kind of open it up to the whole group at this point. You can unmute yourself and fire away. No, no new um, stuff. I did have a conversation. You kind of see it there with uh, Weldon's uh, <clears throat> comment, something similar whenever we were talking about adjusting the liner on uh, on the lengths. He was talking about, you know, whenever the, the porch is installed with the ceiling, only running that that wall sheeting up to the the um, height of the porch ceiling. So we've known about that for a while. Yep. Yeah, that's a, a good vote for that one. Um, yeah, I definitely need to get to that. I know it's something in the future, but do you want to show the colors? Because on test, I do have a job that shows some colors of the materials. I don't know. If uh, you sure, you want to show your screen? and uh, Will you give me access? Oh, wow. Yeah. So well. Yeah. So the idea here is that you can you can do things like make your uh, make your skirt board if it's treated. You can make it uh, look a little green, like green, treated lumber. Um, as Sean mentioned, it's it's useful for being able to QC and say, hey, did I remember to put a an LVL header on that overhead door? Um, if there's a a different color for engineered wood so if you are seeing my screen guys um mm -hmm. i got just the the green is uh pressure treated this color up here is using the um engineered lumber color and then the the more original colors that's for uh yellow pine but uh, let's see where else I had steel. I guess uh, I can go to wall girt framing. And I did have the steel box girt to show up as steel, the dark steel. And most of you guys, if you've played with the, um, the trusses, the steel trusses use the same colors. So there's two different colors of, of this and then a red iron steel but uh i don't have those in here but this is just a quick model that i was just checking the colors i don't know if that'll help and these colors are going to show up on outputs too so uh, cross sections um your post layouts and stuff you'll see the colors involved with those i think it helps with uh identifying which posts are going to be pressure treated and which posts aren't we can't cut a post in half like uh, some of you guys use the the pressure treated posts only up to a certain height, and then the rest is just that laminated plies. But we don't do that. Here. But that that's it. Just thought somebody'd like to see it. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. So just to just to be clear, this Paul, we're looking at Paul's test. Yeah. Site. So we, you know, we're working on this as we speak and uh, we go through testing and review these. So this is not available right now, but it will be next release.
Okay, um, I did have a request to show the viewer link again. Um, so let me. Or Patcha. <clears throat> I'll just I'll share that real quick again. So if you missed the beginning, um, Keith Keith was on, and with this viewer, you do need to talk with Keith and or Royden or or Royden, and. There's kind of a special um, pricing okay. that's set up in order to get this and make it available. So you probably won't see this right now. But, you know, once you do, this is how you get to it. You go to the details. You can either go from here or you can go into your job and click on the job name. But I'll go into the details for this one. And really, you just get a link here. And if you're on this um, details page and if you hit copy yeah, link, yeah, it's going to copy it just like any other text. And so that's just the text link. And you can um, you could go into an email and just hit paste, and it's going to paste this link into that email. You could go into a document, hit paste, it's going to paste that link. It's just like any other text. Um, so, you know, like if I go to this document that I had open before and hit control V or if I paste it, this is going to be that link that would take that person to the viewer. You can also embed this into your documents, into like your sales proposals, this viewer link token. If you put that into your document, it's going to just fill in this blank for any given job. So it's really just, it's just a text. It's just a link. You just copy that. And then once you, um, if you put that into your web browser like I did here, This I did this earlier, and you open that up, it's gonna take you to this viewer where you can kind of just look around and toggle around and, and that's about it. That's really all you can do. But this is a secure link, it's kind of a strange address, but that's because this is there's some security going on in there. And so again, you do have to talk with Keith or Royden to get that set up as part of your system, but that's how you would do that. Yeah, so April asked, uh, do we have to turn that viewer option on in framing rules or something? No, you. we have to turn that on. Keith or Roy will have to uh, turn that on, so. So currently, thank you, Seen, for uh, demonstrating that again. Currently, we have the Graver Post version of the smart build system. Is that something that we would have to get in touch with Graver Post Buildings, or do we get in touch with you guys. It's a great question. I'd say either one. You might want to get in touch with Graber Post first. Okay, because I was checking online um, and uh -huh. it, it's not turned on. So, but yeah. thanks again for demonstrating how to do that. But I guess I'll just get in touch with them, see what we need to do from here. Okay. Yep. Right. Just so you know, it seems like everybody's asking the same question. It's not going to be turned on. It's something we turn on for you. Yeah. yeah. Just because there is that cost associated with it. Uh, Dura Barn, can you explain the cost? And Keith did explain that earlier. He said uh, it's a another seat license, I think. Is that what he said, Sean? No, he said it would be a negotiation with that individual customer. So, oh, okay. <clears throat> yeah, so that's a conversation you'd have to have with, with Keith or Royden. All right. <clears throat> I don't have any more questions from customers on my end. Okay. Uh, Jason did ask one thing. I've had had I've had come up in the last a few times in the last week or so when adding an additional building to another building to another additional building. Oh, <clears throat> the program creates a second wall along the wall it's joining to is there any way to get it not to do that 
Um, and so, yeah, there's, <clears throat> when you have, yeah, when you have an attached building and you attach a building to that attached building, um, it doesn't always clean up that wall that it's attaching to. Um, so uh, we'll get to you in a second, Mitch. So like this one where you added the attached building, you'll notice that uh, what he needed to do was to go in and edit this attached building and under advanced way down at the end, <clears throat> there is a open shared wall. So you can either leave it closed, which is the default, or you can open the sheathing or you can make it fully open. Mm -hmm. So that closes. So um, yeah, Jason, if you have a specific job, then I would recommend reaching out to support and say, hey, can you, uh, can you help me with this particular example? It is tricky. There's a lot of different things that go into it, um, particularly if the buildings are not exactly the same size. In this case, it's the same width and height with a zero offset. But if they're different sizes, you know, if this attached building were taller, then you kind of need the back wall, at least the upper part of it. So it gets, yeah, yeah. So go ahead and, uh, Jason said he'll reach out to support with the specific issue he's having. We try to do a really good job of it, but we uh, probably fail in certain scenarios. And if you can identify those, we'll look at getting them fixed up. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Yeah, Jason. And yeah, so Jason, you've got to reach out to support. Yeah. Um, well, then, had a good question. Could, would there be any benefit in having a user form where ideas on using the software can be exchanged with each other? I, di I didn't catch that, Mark. Uh, well, then, asked. Would there be any benefit in having a user forum where ideas on using the software can be exchanged with each other? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great idea. I'm not sure how we would do it, but we can certainly start to look into that. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there was something from Mitch for liner on ceiling, on vaulted ceilings. Most people would be using a center trim piece, which absolutely makes sense. I don't think we're gonna, whenever we finally do follow the vault of the vaulted ceiling, yeah. we could do some extra trim parts there. I think we probably would. It wouldn't it come in as a valley if we had that set up, but just a uh, peak mm -hmm. trim. It's similar, yeah. yeah. Similar to that, I don't think we have a specific trim park for that, though. Right. Oh, uh, we just got a couple more in there. Mark, if you can, Aaron Moser. <clears throat> yeah, can we get post info off of the stud frame cross section? Mm. Yes, so it's stud frame cross section. Um, we have done some work on the stud on the cross sections for a stud frame, um, and I believe is is that a separate output, Paul? Uh, stud, stud frame, cross frame cross section. Stud frame cross section. Yes, stud no. frame are separate. I mean, I'm sorry, no. It's okay. just cross sections, and we still have trouble with those uh, stud frames. We still aren't putting in the top and bottom cords or top and bottom plates. Yeah, that one we have pretty high on the list. The challenge there is that different people want to see different things. We just have to decide what we want to put on there exactly. But we do have a good sample at this point, and so that one should be coming up pretty soon. I don't think it's going to be the next release, but maybe the one after.
Uh, yeah, Kevin at Starhome put in a vote for the uh, forum. It said, how about a limited access face group, book group for sharing ideas? That would be the first step until they set up a forum. I, that may be a, that may be the best method to do that, the best way to do that. I don't think it makes sense to set up a forum on Smart Build per se, but setting up a forum on like Facebook or some other platform. Um, I will confess, I never use those kind of things, so I'm not the person to talk to about that. Um, but any, if anybody has any ideas about what the best way to set that up would be. Um, if we could do that on just smartbuild.com. We have a Facebook uh, site already. I just put it to everyone. And I think you can just post your comments in there. There may be some kind of groups that um, can be made. What is that, Paul? Uh, I just posted a link that we have on our um on our smart build uh, main site. Okay. I just posted it in the comments if people want to, if people use Facebook, they can go there and maybe ask questions. Yeah, that's a really but, good idea. Uh, I, I am not the, the um, owner of this smart build uh, Facebook site, the, uh, our company that runs the, the main site is. I believe, or Suzanne, our marketing company. Yeah, we have yeah. a marketing partner. Oh, okay. Yeah, I probably Brendan might be interested in this as support. It's a good potentially, you know, a lot of questions could just be answered on that forum. Uh, Mitch brings up a good point. It would uh, it would need to be a private group. Uh, And uh, so that not everyone mm -hmm. in the world can hear questions. Kevin mm -hmm. said the nice part of the forum was that it was a searchable format. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I, I'm not sure what the best venue for that is. Um, it might be Facebook, um, but I'll let people more yeah. experience Facebook talk about that. Um, It'd be nice if you could just, log in, if you just log in with your smart yeah. build password. Well, no, you probably log in something different. That's, that's, we'll, we'll figure something out. Um, it's a great idea. Yeah. Um, I'm going to make back to the earlier point. I'm going to make a task in June right now talking about that because I don't think we've ever discussed that. Yeah. yeah so let's be good. Let's brainstorm that one and come up with a, a way to do it. But the, the idea is a good one where we some, some place where existing smart build users could come in and, and, uh, and talk about and complain about even <laughs> or praise either way um, but uh, identify hey I ran into this issue here's what I did to get around it um, those kinds of things um, getting back to the earlier question about the ceiling pitch break there is under ceiling trim there is a ceiling pitch break trim type so I think we're already set up with that So when does that come into play at this point? I believe it comes in when you have rafters. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. Rafters mm -hmm. and inside corners. Yeah, okay. if you have a rafter roof, a, a rafter roof on your main building, and you put ceiling on it, the ceiling liner in that case is at the bottom of the rafter. And there's a trim part that gets placed up there. So okay. yep. it's just up to this point, trusses have always been flat and just sort of waved our heads at that. But uh, it sounds like we need to move up the priority of that because as, as was pointed out, that's a, an opportunity for um, <laughs> For error and a quote, 
misquoting a job and not not including enough material um, if you forget that we're not doing ceiling right just yet mm, yeah okay All right, looks like we're winding down. Yes, going once, going twice. Anything else? All right, well, everyone have a wonderful rest of the week. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you.